Hi, everybody. I'm Helena. I'm a product designer at Coda. And thanks so much for uh, spending some time with me today. So like I said, uh, I work at Coda. Coda is an all-in-one doc. You can do things in it like um, you'd use it the same way that you'd use a doc, a spreadsheet, or even an app. So this is what a Coda doc looks like. You can have pages in it and you can nest those pages. So you can you know, just organize your information in different ways. You can also add text to it, add paragraphs, uh, add tables. And we also have some more interactive elements like the ability to you know, create reactions and upvote things, as well as the ability to connect um, to external apps, for example, Gmail. So you can, let's say, email out a weekly food plan or something like that. So that's a little bit of context about Coda, which should help me get into this story. So less than a year into my time at Coda, um, I sat down with Shashir, our CEO, and my product manager, Glenn, and Shashir shared with us a little bit about parts of the vision of Coda. And part of that vision is that uh, the belief that everybody's a maker, and as a maker, everybody should be able to build a, a solution for their own problem, whatever that problem may be, whether it's like meal planning or you have a perspective on how to run a one-on-one, -on -one, for example. And then the other part of that is that everybody should be able to share out those solutions so I can share that out with the world and people should be able to discover them as well. And so we sat down and, you know, she shared more, more or less that let's do this. And from the beginning, this was framed as let's build a publishing platform. So let's build the ability to publish docs, share them out with the world and have people discover them. And so I was really excited about this because publishing is super personal to me. So this is a screenshot from a blog of mine hosted on Blurdy back in 2005. And like many of you, I spent um, a good amount of my, my teenage years publishing things um, like this on things like Blurdy or, or LiveJournal, Greatest Journal, WordPress and, and beyond. And what I really loved about publishing at that time were two things. One was the ability to create something super easily. Um, so just have it, have it be easy enough for me to do it, you know, like as a, as a teenage girl living in Ecuador. Um, and then the other aspect of it was just feeling really proud of it as well, like something that I really wanted to share with my friends and uh, just put out there. So I was really excited about the uh, the potential to maybe build a new way of, of publishing. But I was also pretty, pretty scared. I was pretty nervous. Um, and there were kind of two reasons why I was nervous. One was more personal in that I hadn't really designed something this big um, from zero to one before. So I had redesigned existing systems at places like TransferWise. I'd designed smaller tools from zero to one at Google, but I'd never really done something quite like this. And then the other aspect of it was that Coda at this point had only been out of beta um, for less than a year. And so we had a lot of competing priorities um, and publishing was like not really an obvious decision to make. It wasn't an obvious path. We didn't really have any demand for it. So it felt a little bit like a wild card. So the question for me was, like, how am I going to do this? <laughs> how am I going to build a compelling enough vision for, for my team to get on board? Because there was hesitation for the company to get on board and to ultimately create something that's really going to last. That it's not just going to be, hey, we're going to build this. Like, hopefully we'll have a nice launch day, but that's really going to last going forward. So as I went on this kind of vision building journey, the first part of this was really immersing myself in the space. And so, you know, right away, the first things that I kind of noticed about designing from zero to one versus, you know, redesigning or optimizing something else is that you don't have data to work with. You don't have existing users behavior. You don't even have maybe users that you can interview for, for research. And so you really have to fill those gaps. 
Um, and you know, I, I did this by trying to become the, the expert for my team since I was the design lead on it. And so the first things that I try to understand were of course, like the space. So the publishing space. So this was quite new, um, you know, not just for me, but for my whole team. So the first thing that I did was to look at who the, who the publisher kind of competitors were out there. Um, and that I looked at everything from, um, you know, publishing blog posts, but also things like publishing no code apps, publishing websites. So looking at that full spectrum of interactivity. Um, and then what I would do is just kind of screenshot it, put it in a Figma file, put a bunch of sticky notes on it with commentary and start sharing it out. And this was helpful to just kind of resort back to this in case we needed to point something uh, and then be able to intentionally make decisions and say, oh yeah, like this, you know, this feels familiar enough, this feels right. Or we wanna, you know, intentionally make a decision away from this. The next thing for me to understand was uh, the people, like who would be publishing on Coda and and why, why were they gonna do that? And so usually I would have done some user interviews either with existing users um, or if it's something newer, you know, maybe with people who are already doing that, like publishers who are already out there. But one of the challenges of this project was that we had a really limited amount of time. So we didn't really have the time to actually do, do user research, which for me was really difficult because that's usually a core part of my practice, but um, I had to stay flexible. So luckily publishing is inherently a public behavior. So people publish things so that they can, you know, be out, about, be out in the open. So what I did with my product manager and our marketing team was identify people who we thought might be good Coda publishers. So either, you know, Coda users who, you know, had insights that, you know, could be, could be worth publishing or could be great Coda published docs. Um, or people who maybe weren't using Coda, but we saw, oh yeah, that could be a great Coda doc. And what we started to notice as I was working on this with um, our marketing team was that things that might be great published docs are things that kind of turn philosophy into implementation or an insight um, into something a little bit more actionable. So let's say I have a perspective on how to run a great one-on-one, -on -one, then I might actually turn that into you know, a one-on-one -on -one doc. And so we started kind of thinking a little bit about who those people might be. Um, and it turned out it was a little bit of like, you know, people in leadership roles or executives or sometimes just managers. So we kind of started understanding who those people were a little bit. And then the next thing to understand was, of course, um, our product. So, you know, we understood the space, the people who may be, may be part of this new thing, but where did Coda fit in? And like, yeah, where did Coda fit into the publishing, um, the publishing space? So one of the things that um, I felt was important was to really ground this new initiative and this new vision uh, in, in the doc. The doc is so core to Coda. I mean, Coda has a lot of features, but at its core, it is a doc. And so one of the things that I did was take um, posts that were published by, by people in, in other outlets and recreate them in a Coda doc. And so this was helpful to see at a glance what we needed um, as kind of like table stick features in order to even be considered as a place where you might publish something. Um, and so this was a really helpful exercise um, for me to understand what the differences were, but also to share with my team to help them see how close or how far away we were from you know, being a place where people might consider publishing. And one of the things that we noticed from this exercise were just kind of like the small features that elevate something into being a publishable object. So for example, things like having an author byline is super important. When you publish something, you're proud of it and you wanna put your name on it. Or things like having a cover photo that you can customize. So those felt like small things, but as I was doing um, this research, it kind of became clear that it, it might be necessary. So that was kind of the first part of this was really understanding the space, the people, and also where our own product fit into that. Um, and what was interesting about this part of the, the, the journey for me was that 
um, I was used to really relying on on data or user research to 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 ground me um, and to move forward. But here, I really had to gather context um, from external sources, whether it was like looking at competitors or finding people online and trying to understand their behavior. But also ultimately what this did for me was that it gave me a cushion of confidence to move forward um, into kind of the next phase of this, which was about developing a strong perspective. So again, if we had been redesigning something, we would have had user data to say, hey, here's where we really need to focus. Or, you know, we, we see a drop off point here, so we're really going to try and optimize this. But in a project like this, where you don't have a lot of time and we were designing something that new, um, we needed to have strong perspectives to guide, to guide the vision in order to understand where we were going to spend our time and what were going to be the most important parts of this vision. So the first thing that I kind of started uh, developing a strong perspective on was around why people would publish on Coda and what was it that we were bringing to the table. So we mentioned before that with our marketing team, we looked at, you know, what, um, you know, who might be who might be great people that could publish. Um, and it was about turning kind of philosophy into implementation. So that seemed like an interesting place to start because Coda um, would allow you to do that through through the interactive components and so forth. Um, the other thing that I started to kind of think back to was as I was looking at the space of, you know, the whole publishing area, that interactivity spectrum was really key. You know, was publishing in Coda going to feel more like publishing a blog post or was it going to feel more like publishing a no code app or was it going to feel more like publishing a website? Um, and where we landed on this was actually maybe somewhere a little bit um, more like a blog post, but definitely leaning into some of those interactive elements. And it was really helpful to have that grounding of like the full space in order to make an intentional decision about that. And finally, thinking back to my own experience as a publisher, two feelings that I really wanted to capture were um, one, that feeling of being really proud about something that you made. And then the second one, um, the feeling that it was super easy to do that thing. So where this kind of landed us in terms of the, the strong perspective that we were going to bring into this vision was about uh, Coda Publishing being a place where it's really easy to publish interactive docs. And I'll kind of walk through some of the uh, design decisions we made that came directly out of this perspective. So going back to kind of the, the Coda doc, this is um, a Coda doc here. Um, and what you see here is, you know, if I wanted to add my name to it, I would just have to add it in the paragraph uh, in the canvas down here. Um, and I might write a little description about it, but you don't have a real sense of hierarchy. So one of the things that we did was um, add a, a, a few new features just in this kind of header part of the doc. So one was a cover photo. So you add a cover photo to the top. The second was the subtitle. And then the third was this author byline. And again, these may feel like really small additions, but it was actually really crucial to make the doc feel polished enough to, to, to be published. What was also great about this was that um, ultimately, these were just doc features. So it wasn't like really specific to this new publishing initiative. We actually ended up improving all docs because of this. The second thing that uh, that we looked at was the navigation. So in, in Coda, you can have these pages and you can nest them and you can you know, essentially build your own navigation. And as I thought back to that like interactivity spectrum across the publishing space, I did want to lean lean into that and have have a Coda doc feel a little bit more interactive, have elements that felt a little bit more like a website. So one of the things that we did is that when you publish, this side nav turns into this top nav here. So we take all the same pages and we just rearrange them at the top, and then you have a drop down where you can see them. And just this small shift gives people a sense of like 
hey, like this feels polished. Um, it feels more like a website. And I didn't really have to do anything in order to, to make this happen. Um, so that was something, that was a decision that we made. The other thing that we also thought about was about um, letting people create interactive things, not just in terms of the navigation, but in terms of the content as well. So here, for example, in this doc, you can have um, a, a search box where you can enter search terms and then that'll filter the table below. And then you also have a select list. And so these are really lightweight ways to make a doc more interactive. Or you can imagine if you have like a resource list, you can have people navigate it through these um, through these ways. And so it was really important that we made it really easy to do that. And part of that was giving the maker control in the sense that people can only interact with these elements, but they can't, for example, edit the rest of your doc or write on the canvas, for example. And then the last part of this was really making sure that it was all super easy, easy to do. And so really thinking back to my own feelings of being a publisher and wanting to give people that experience. And so what we did here was you know, just add this kind of beautify feature at the end of publishing that turns on a couple of Coda features for you. So you know that you're gonna get this beautiful doc at the end of it. So for example, we turn on the cover photo and we do standard alignment on your pages, for example. Pretty small things. So what was interesting about developing a strong perspective here was that um, it, it really helped to guide the, the vision in the sense that we knew where to focus. But for me, it was difficult because um, usually I could say, hey, well, in all of these user interviews, this is what we heard, or like, you know, here's what the data says. But we really didn't have that. So it was, you know, me trusting myself in that like some of these opinions were maybe going to be right, but also working with my product manager and my team to bounce ideas off one of one another and see what resonated with one another. And so once we understood, um, or at least had developed a perspective about what we thought were the most important aspects of this, um, the next part was to tell the complete story arc. So it wasn't enough to just say, hey, this vision is comprised of like a cover photo feature and maybe like, you know, some interactive elements. Um, you know, it was really like, hey, what's the full story that we want to tell with this vision, even if that, even if that means we're not going to build it all at first. And so for publishing, the, the story really evolves, of course, around the publisher. You know, they're really our hero here. So the story might be that they, they have a great idea, you know, or they have like a perspective or an insight on something. So, you know, maybe they write like a blog post about it in a Coda doc, and then they create maybe like a template for it. Then they publish it. Um, people can then find this stock in, in a place that we then built called the gallery. So you're able to discover it. Maybe their doc even goes trending because it's, you know, it's just like packed full of insights. It's so great. And then after that, the publisher, you know, feels so awesome. And then they go on to publish their next doc. And so that's kind of like the full story arc. And that story arc doesn't you know, it's not a feature list. It doesn't give you all of the details of all the things that we built in order to make this happen. But when we shared this kind of story with our with our team and with our company, they understood overall, you know, what what our goal was long term. And concretely, how I shared this out with my team, you know, of course, we had meetings where we did more storytelling and so forth. But one of the things that we did as well was create what I call a TLDR page at the top of my Figma file or a too long didn't read page. And what this page is about is just creating um, a flow here where you have a few key moments, you know, maybe six or eight mocks um, that are meant to tell the main story of what you're trying to build. And so um, this is really helpful if somebody's, you know, coming in and just trying to understand what you're doing. And uh, and and they haven't, as the title says, they haven't read the full thing. They don't they don't have all the details. And this isn't meant to explain how all of these features work, but it's meant to just give you an overall understanding of what what story you're trying to create. 
And what this can also help you do once you understand kind of this full story arc is really think about the sequence. So for us, it was really important to get the doc right. You know, so we concentrated on those doc elements like the author bylines and the cover photos and the navigation. You know, we wanted like this shot to look great. But of course, there were other elements to it, like the gallery, which is super important in order to discover these docs. But that sequencing um, choice was made clear once we had that full story arc. And so that's actually exactly you know, how we did it. So we ended up launching the ability to publish a doc um, in February of last year. And so that allowed you to, to publish the doc. It also indexes the doc so that people can find it on search. Um, and you, know, you, you get a neat URL and you know, there's all sorts of neat features kind of packed into that. And then in April of last year, actually almost um, a year ago to this date, we then launched the gallery. And so that was a place where, that is a place where you can go and discover docs and docs can go trending and so on. And so here's a little bit more of what, what that looks like. And so, you know, that full story arc was, was key to have because that was the vision that we were trying to share with um, with my team and with the company. And I think what like what I really learned from from that experience in that sense was that um, you know you're creating this vision that is meant to have this full story arc, but ultimately what what you launch is not exactly going to get all of those pieces right. Um, and so in that sense, again, it was really different than my previous experiences of trying to redesign something or optimize something where you just have so much more understanding and context in order to make decisions. But here, what it was really about was about putting something out there that was then able to grow from there um, and that could expand, that our makers could then you know, use in different ways and, and then we could learn from. And so, like I said, we launched the, the gallery, which was kind of like, you know, that was the full kind of feature set or for the most part of what we consider the publishing platform a year ago um, today, more or less. And um, of course, this time last year was, um, you know, a pretty awful time for the world. And for the States, we were in California, you know, COVID was kind of just, just hitting us there. Um, and I think it was a really, um, you know, unclear time for for anybody and also for people building products in terms of knowing, hey, how are people going to use this? Is this even worthwhile? You know, it was just a very unclear time. But our makers always impress us. You know, um, when you're building a tool as flexible as Coda, it's always amazing to see what people are going to make. And this time was really no different as well. So we saw people building docs um, that helped each other, you know, um, that supported each other in, in local communities as well as at a national level. We saw docs that helped each other find jobs. And we also saw docs that connected students with tutors around the world. So this, this here was a doc um, created by Sal Khan, the founder of Khan Academy, where he, he did just that, he, you know, helped connect uh, students with tutors around the world. And what's super awesome about this is that Schoolhouse.World is actually now its own full on startup and, you know, has completely outgrown this doc, which is so awesome to see uh, people like prototyping amazing ideas and, and having them come to life in a Coda doc and then growing beyond that. And so it's super amazing to see what people have made with Coda and with our published docs. Um, and you know, since we launched last year, we've had tens of thousands of, of docs published, uh, millions of views. Um, and so that uh, is pretty wild to me, thinking back to kind of that initial meeting with our CEO Shashir and, and Glenn, my product manager, and just kind of thinking, about whether it was the right time to build something like this, how we were gonna do it since we didn't have a lot of context. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, building that context, developing those strong perspectives and, and, really, and really trusting myself as the design lead on this project to, to make some of those calls and move it forward alongside my team. 
So um, yeah, really excited about where we're at now. And what's what's the most important thing is that it, it's still growing. We're still seeing um, how people are continuing to use it. And we're, we're even, you know, redesigning parts of it now, which is great. We have a lot more to learn with. So yeah, I'm Helena. Um, I'd love to hear about what you're building both on Coda and off of Coda and how you're learning to to you know build visions and trust yourself in in that journey um yeah you can find me on twitter at helena jar thank you so much